Why is it that every time we have an issue that needs to be addressed, you always end up walking away? I try to address the issue again and you have nothing to say. And this can go on for days, weeks. It truly feels like you're stonewalling me. And the longer it lasts, the more frustrated I get because all I want to do is resolve the problem and move on. But for you, it's never the right time. You retreat into your own world. I'm left feeling disregarded, disrespected, totally alone. The feeling this way is like worse than the actual issue at hand. So this is what we're going to be talking about during today's podcast. I'm Allison Logie, and this is my Aspie, Danny Gagnon. I'm the Aspie. Hi. So Danny and I are by no means professionals on the topic of neurotypical Aspie relationships. And I know we all come from different backgrounds, our awareness varies, our partners are on different levels of the spectrum. But I have to say that if it wasn't for Danny's ability to express himself so well, I would not be inspired to share his insight with you. Okay, so Danny, I know I'm not alone in the scenario I described before, and, and it's taken me five years to finally get a grip on how to manage our challenges. I mean, I, I would love to share with other partners of Aspies, if they haven't already figured it out, what they can do to dissolve the communication challenges sooner than later, because the longer it lasts, the more the resentment builds, and as that happens, the more difficult it is to sit down and have a peaceful exchange. So this is the barrier that keeps us from moving forward. So where do we start? It's all to do with understanding one another. Obviously, living with an SP is challenging because it's go against what's neurotypical or used to. So when we are... Of when we have some exchange together, it's important to simply try to have a good understanding and then make the compromises necessary to make our relationship work. But before we start into this, I think it's important just to give some kind of information about where we are or I am situated into the Asperger's spectrum mm -hmm. because that's an important factor. That way people will be able to judge that the characteristic that I have, is it going to be milder in their case? So I did my diagnosis by a professional about six years ago. Although I was already, I already knew that I was uh, autistic from a very young age. But um, lately, I, I needed to know precisely where I was standing. And I was very surprised that my test came up to out of 50 to 48. Now, 48 is, uh, give you an idea, is um, the maximum score for an ASPE is 38. I got mm -hmm. 48 out of 50, so I'm ex on to the higher end of the spectrum. In fact, I was told by my psychologist that I was um, more ASPE than an ASPE. <laughs> so I had the extreme uh, uh, version of, of Asperger. Usually most people would be between say 28 to 37. Um, in my case I'm completely out of that but I think what's interesting about, about my my intensity of Asperger is because there's no ambiguity to the characteristic which define an Asperger because I have extreme in pretty much every um, specificities of, of, of an SP. so I got pretty much all of them. So it was kind of gave an idea about when you want to be able to know precisely what's going on. Then in that case, I would be the person to be able to talk to. And then for other ASP, it would be perhaps a milder version. But it still means that it's still going to be explaining many parts of the character. It's just, again, I have the extreme. So do you think it, it was a good idea that you had an official diagnosis done? Did, was it helpful? It was very helpful because it helped me to be able to understand exactly when I'm situated. And it gave some answers to some of the characteristics I was not sure. Is it part of my character? Mm -hmm. Is it part of the conditioning of the way I've been brought up? Mm -hmm. Or is it part of my SP? And once you have defined that, understood that, you know where you start your research and be able to implement it 
what you can change and be able to simply accept what you can't change. Right, right. And that is very important, not only for myself, but whoever is going to surround me. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, the situation which you have described earlier, well, there's things I can do, but there's things I can't do at all. So it's very important for you to understand that what are the compromises to be made. And, and that's been uh, part of the challenge is almost like not truly believing what you can't change that you're so smart you know how can you possibly not see that and it was almost difficult for me to believe that there are things that you cannot change and, and that was part of the uh, the challenge in, in in understanding where the limitations were for sure it's it's completely out of this world as i was saying earlier is when you are with an entity you expect the entity to be behaving in a certain way but when it comes to an sp because of the wiring of our brain is no way we can change that and this is this is this first podcast will be a very good example of our limitations and that there's many but we can start with this one because i think communication is one of the most important one and if you don't understand what's going on while you're trying to resolve an issue when you're trying to be able to explain to one another and to be rightly want to be heard mm -hmm. in that case is just like you know it's you're going nowhere because it's very important to be able to have a good communication to start with well, that was one of the things that you kept trying to tell me for years, <laughs> at least three of the five years, is that you weren't feeling heard. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I'm listening to you. And then we discussed, okay, so after you speak that I would turn around and, and kind of repeat my own words. So let me, if I understand correctly, this is what you're saying. But I have to say that I often sometimes would get a little sidetracked because you have a lot that you want to say and I'm used to as a neurotypical I'm used to having reciprocated conversation where you say something and I can say oh yeah and and go along with it or clarify something or say oh well no that's not what I meant but what you ask of me is to just you want to say your piece and then when you're finished speaking you want me to sort of turn around and summarize very shortly you know in in what you've expressed and uh, if I truly, truly have heard you. And I find it really challenging to just sit there and listen to what you're expressing without saying what it is I need to express at the time. Because by the time you're done, I forget what the heck it was that I wanted to say. Being heard is another subject altogether because it's quite complex and it's uh, a lot to do with understanding the other partner. And there's an, an, an energy factor which can't be undermined, which will be having some consequences to your body. And a lot of people will not understand where that's coming from. So I think we're going to, to try, first of all, to organize uh, the environment. The environment, right. Which is going to be suitable to open a conversation. Creating because a safe space. A safe space. Right. Because it's important to be able to, if you don't have that, well, being heard is not going to happen. So if we start at the beginning, I think it's important, for example, to define what are the conversation what type of conversation you want to have or you need at that point. So let's say we just had um, very uh, a, a, a difference, a difference about a subject in particular, which is sensitive to one another, which is fine. We, we all have issues to resolve in our life. And at some point you can actually um, just talk about something and say, well, that's a difficult issue. And for many couples, it could be about money, for example. It mm -hmm. could be one of them or the way I did look to someone else or it could be anything. Mm -hmm. And what is important is to be able to have someone with whom you can exchange about it. But what happened is this. If it is a sensitive subject, you're going to, to, to react to it. And that's the problem, to react to it. It's the problem you have to accept it is the case. But it's what you're going to do afterward because it's not to limit the reaction. I think it's important to be able to react the way you should be reacting because it's important, You, you it's, it's yourself. You can't lose yourself uh, and say, I'm going to suppress what I'm feeling right. about the conversations you have initiated. Okay, so that's important. So and as an aspect perspective, it's just a matter to say, okay, my walls will be there. I'm going to, to hear what you have to say but is is not going to be constructive at that point. Just just 
let it out, I would say. So it won't be constructive at that point because of the way in which the energy behind the delivery? That's correct. Okay. So because the energy you're going to associate by lashing out or expressing mm -hmm. something which is difficult for you, it's, it's, it's negative. And it's very, you know, the same way that many ask you, you can't touch them or they will be very uh, sensitive to sound. They're going to be sensitive to many things. Right. We are excessively sensitive to energy. Unfortunately, energy, energy, we can't see it. But well, we don't okay. think about that. That's right, because you can't see it. But it's not because you can't see it that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It is there. We all have different kind of energy and aura that we carry with us. Our thoughts, in fact, our, our dogs will feel our energy. Mm -hmm. So they will be uh, sleeping in our bedroom if we are uh, feeling fine about one another. Mm -hmm. But they will be sleeping downstairs <laughs> If we're not, That's true. so so they feel energy all the time. So yep. animals will be able to be with you. For example, if you fear them, well, they will start to bark because they don't like that energy. So it's very similar to that. And for us, we're very sensitive to that. So in my case, in particular, if I have someone with a negative energy around me, that means they will not be receptive at all. That means I will have nothing to say to in response to what you are expressing about, what you're talking about, at all. Because the only way that I can express what I'm saying, like for example, for example right now, is not through my brain, it's not a thought, it's simply through an inspiration. And that's the kind of thing, for example, you are having a shower and you have an idea coming from nowhere, it's not following a kind of chain of thoughts, and then you arrive to a conclusion. No, no, it's just arrived from nowhere, kind of an inspiration like that. And say, oh, yeah, I have to remember that when I finish my shower. And usually you have already forgotten. But in my case, it's the only way I can express myself. I have no capacity to rely on my three pounds meatloaf between my, my ears to be able to have some kind of logical kind of conclusion about what I should say or do. It all comes from an inspiration. And in fact, only twice it came from my thoughts and then I was completely lost because how can you rely on that to be able to make decisions? That's beyond me. But apparently neurotypical do that. <laughs> so to me, it's just incredible. But in my case, it's only inspirations, which is kind of like, you know, it's much more uh, reliable as so, far as I'm concerned. So when you, you get lost, it's, it's often really to an, an interruption, something that interrupts your ability to be able to, to flow with, the inspiration and are you saying that then perhaps my energy when I come to the table to discuss something and I've you know I, I may look okay but I really I have a resentment and I am so you know upset I'm so angry frustrated so you're saying that that whatever it is that I'm exuding that energy on an energetic level interrupts your ability to express yeah, that's right. It's make it impossible for me to be able to have something to say at all. And and there's two frustration here. You have your frustration and not be able to simply freely express, right. rightly so. Sure. Express yourself and it's like the, the the anger and the frustrations. And I have the same frustration of not knowing what to say at all. So it's very difficult. So what we tend to do in that sort of situation, as you know, is I'm going to the basement into my my the uh, dog room. house. Well, yeah, if you want to call it that way. But I like to call it my second bedroom, right. uh, my either way. And uh, so this is where I, I'm going to move because I can't rely on you to protect me any longer. So I have to be able to say, okay, um, I'm going to protect my emotions, my feeling, because this is the only way. Okay, so hold on. You said because you can't rely on me to protect you. So Correct. what does that mean? That means that in any time you can't, you could hurt me emotionally or you can hurt me with your um, energy you carrying with this anger and frustrations that you carry with you around the house until it is resolved okay. that you want it or not okay. i know as a neurotypical you will carry on thinking and kind of like you know uh, mixing actually you can oh, talk oh, about yeah. it more about sure. it. what I, does it go in your mind i will have an inner monologue going on mm. you know when you are not receptive i want to readdress uh, attempt to address the issue but you say no now is not the time mm. uh it, or you just have nothing to say it feels controlling 
to me. It feels like, okay, so you're going to call the shots mm -hmm. when it's time to talk. That's not fair because I have something I want to express. So I'll walk away feeling like, who the hell is he? You know, so I have that inner monologue going on in my head for sure. Yes. I, I'm not saying it's not the time. It's only because it's not the right energy. Right. That's that's right. what we have to, to be able to express. Because that's the big thing. Yes. This, to us, is something we have experienced for the last, say, four years, let's say, after the honeymoon's uh, uh, first year which was kind of easy but afterwards is when you have to start to work on a relationship so those challenge was coming and occurring about say every six weeks which is a normal pace mm. for a relationship where one another we have to bring uh, the best of each other meaning the difficult parts which are not easy to address but they are so necessary to grow not only as an individual but also as a couple. And this is what a relationship is so important for, to bring that out. But we need to do it in a gentle and paced and, 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 and controlled kind of ways. We can't just at any time, knowing there's an issue, we have some challenge or my partner have challenge with, and that at any moment that I'm going to raise that issue, knowing is going to bring something negative as a reaction. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. So what we tend to do as neurotypical or not, we say, okay, if you have some important issue to talk about, go in a restaurant, have a meal, make an ambiance, which is going to help to be kind of suited and, and calm, where you will not, say, be able to, or hopefully, to make a scene there because you have your have other people you will want to control that so so okay that's great setting up again a safe space to exchange but a lot of what i i've read on uh wives of aspie's facebook page is that you know i just want to say something i i go with the intention to deliver you know my message to him gently i'm careful but he still feels attacked so how do we get beyond that well, that's a very good point because both of you need to understand that it is the energy and maybe it's the frustration of the Aspie being, finding himself kind of cornered and, and not to know what to say or what to do. And that is not easy at all. And because as a man, especially, we tend to proud ourselves, pride ourselves to think, okay, you know, I can endure this. I can endure anything. I think it's important that I can, you know, use my, 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 what my, I wouldn't say authority, but a kind of like, you know, a, a manly kind of things to be able to say, I'm going to resolve this. I, I, I can undo this. When in fact, it's like, you know, it's our, everything to do with energy. So that's the first part. So it's not because you are ready that your partner is going to be ready. So it's just the thing to think about. And then just making sure the energy is right. So I think this podcast should be about setting up the uh, the safe environment okay. to be able to say okay I understand that that needs to be in place before we can actually resolve any issues or to start with to be heard because that would be the next step for the next podcast right we need to be able to okay, okay once we have set the environment in that case we are more suited to be able to be heard because right. that would be the next step and that would be for the next podcast and then in our, our situation after that uh, we we come down meaning me getting to uh, my uh, in, in the basement and you and then you sometime to time which is great right sometime to time you you kind of feel you have come down and then you come downstairs <laughs> and you start to have a kind of conversation mm -hmm. and obviously <clears throat> It can't be chit chat because SP are notorious of not being able to handle mm -hmm. this. So we tend to say, okay, how do you feel? I think it's a good approach. And then after that, to say, okay, um, when are you ready? But in our case, what we did is to try to uh, resolve this, to go and advance. We, we have decided a year ago that every single morning, we, we, we always have coffee, rain or shine, it doesn't matter. We, we still sit down and have a coffee every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and that for us is important but what we did tend to do is if we didn't feel right in a sense where we are into our challenges mm -hmm. to it, it, I didn't show up for the coffee no, or, or neither would I no. and it was and I would like no way I'm going to be having coffee with him this morning go ahead <laughs> make your own or have your own but I realized by us having that agreement we agree to meet and share our coffee whether 
we say something or not. Just show up. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. That's right. It, it's no obligation. It happened a few times. We had nothing to say. We didn't change not one word. Mm -hmm. But if once as was ready to be able to talk to one another, at least the person will be there in a kind of receptive um, uh, energy. And that was important to put that in place. So that way, she didn't feel that every single time it's her who has to go down in the basement to see if I was okay. Because no way, me, I can't go there at all. It's kind of, it's too painful. So it's too like, um, it's, it would be like cutting my hand. <laughs> it's, it's that bad. So I have to always have to wait for her to decide when she can come. And that was important that she could do that. And that was her uh, um, responsibilities in a sense. So that was also difficult too, because all I'm feeling is like, why is it left up to me all the time? Why is it always me making peace? And I realized that this is a theme between a lot of neurotypical Aspie relationships. And so, yeah. So when I finally kind of, you know, I'll use the word surrendered. So I found what was helpful is just going down stairs and asking, so how are you feeling? That's right. And, and I think that's is kind of thing which we, we can't say, okay, it's your turn. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Not for an SP. This is the compromise that has to be made where it's no way that is, is going to, if he, if he succeeds to do so, th that's great. That's fantastic. I think that could be shared. But uh, I think that um, the, uh, to, to ask the NSP to do that would be t too much. It, it won't need be, be possible. So to, to conclude this, I think it's very important that you find the environment, that it is to go to someone you know will be able to be a referee, for example, to be able to calm things down or to have an awareness of the energy is imperative because your thoughts, if you're getting to sit there calm, but your head is hanger with mm -hmm. all your thoughts, that is, go is not going to go well either. That's Can't an hide energy. It. Can't hide it. You can't. So right. you have to calm down. And, and one of the things also I think did work for you, I think it was like, you know, to have your daughter or someone else to whom you could vent to mm -hmm. about the situation and say, oh, I, 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 we this, that, and again, and, that, and, and so on and so forth. And having someone who can say, okay, you know perfectly well that Danny is not going to be able to have a conversation with you and that will not end. The only way it can end is when both of you being heard. So... Well, you have not a lot of choice here. You need to stop to just like mixing this kind of all those thoughts together to bring it worse mm -hmm. and say, okay, let's see what he has to say. You need to be curious about it and calm down. And only then and you can decide what you want to do. But as, so, as long as you haven't heard the other party, mm -hmm. you need to be able to calm down. And having someone around you would be able to tell you that, to remind you that, mm -hmm. despite the kind of the anger and the frustration and all the negative feelings to say, okay, look, or I can I, I can be the mediator if you want. Let's talk about it. So if you have someone like this or go to a restaurant or anything, or also was coffee on the sofa, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very imperative because there's no way you're going to go anywhere if the energy between, uh, between us anyway mm -hmm. is going to be slightly negative or neutral is good or positive mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. This is where the environment. So you need to start to have an awareness. How's the energy right now? Is it suitable to be able to let my ass be, to get the necessary inspirations, to be able to say what he has to say? Mm -hmm. This is the thought that has to come to your mind when those um, uh, frustrate, uh, not frustration, but uh, challenges do occur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is why um, Wise of Aspie's Facebook page is excellent because we'll just do a hashtag vent or vent and looking for, you know, support one or the other or all. And this is where it's very, very helpful because we all often, we understand each other, which is super and it's very supportive. Um, so first things first, creating an environment that feels safe, safe for both. That's Both right. of us. That's right. Okay. And, and, and right. for us, it's not a choice. It's not okay. a choice. It's, it's no way we will be able to have a conversation in conditions where the energy is not going to be either neutral or at least very safe. 
And that, and it can take some time. I know us sometimes being days. It started with three days. That was our average. Yeah. And then after that, it took like, you know, five days. So it oh. didn't get any better. No. But it's simply like, you know, it was a matter to say a will. You know, we have decided that it's either that or we, we can carry on this That's way. Right. It was getting worse. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, and when you're taking the, the hit on yeah, your body. Yeah, physically. Oh, yeah. Because for you, you can carry on doing your work. Me, yeah. I'm a hypersensitive. So it affects me. And my solar plexus, it sits. And it's like I, I can't eat. And I'm so aware. And all that goes over in my head is, you know, I'll hear you come up from downstairs. I'm thinking, okay, so maybe he's coming to talk. And there's like nothing from you. Absolutely yeah. no response, no initiation at all. Again, feeling left alone, feeling abandoned, feeling disregarded. And, and it, it goes so far where you don't even participate in, in helping me do things around the house. But, uh, we, also, you, exactly. but we understand <laughs> a lot of us with, with our partners, we understand we need to make a list. Because usually we'll not ever you know, refuse. Yeah. I'll make a list or say, I need you to shovel the snow today. That's it. Um, so we, we definitely have that that agreement. And even that took a long time to figure out. How yes. interesting. That's right. As long as we know what to do, we're very reliable. It's a always done. It's not like we don't play in a sense where, well, I will withdraw my help. No, I would have no initiative. That's for certain. Because all my intuitions and all my inspiration is all cut off right. completely. So as far as your concern is like, you know, you, it's like. There's no a, guidance you, happening yes, for you. So okay. it's just like, you know, and, and that, that, that's the reason why I can concentrate on only what I know. But as far as our relationship is concerned, is nothing is possible. So it's very, very frustrating. So, so for myself and sharing, you know, your insight and sharing this with others, because I know not everyone is in a position where their Aspie partner is willing to sit down and have a conversation. So it is about creating a safe environment. And with this exchange, I'd be really curious to know if their partners would be open to, and would understand how important it is to create a safe environment. And that takes time. Just that in itself takes time to build. So I, I would hope that people who are listening in can at least, you know, have that takeaway where they know, okay, so creating a safe environment for exchange means me um, being able to arrive in that environment without carrying all the negative energy and thoughts that I've been carrying around. The two pillar of a relationship is respect and communication. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, it's like, you know, I'm very, I will be very surprised that you can have a successful relationship. Because it's no way you can just not have, can't hurt one another. And that's why the next podcast would be so important. Because being heard is not as simple for an SP that it is for a neurotypical. There's so many aspects that we need to think about. And this is where it's going to be interesting. Okay. All right. Well, this is great. This is super. So, so thanks. Um, yes. <laughs> thanks for your time. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I hope it was helpful for everyone. And then uh, for you to decide if you want us to take some questions that uh, we could take in and talk about together, uh, me and Alison, to see what, uh, what our aspect, because my, my strength is to be able to see things in, in many ways. And this is one of the things we're going to uh, extrapolate a little bit further when, uh, when we have an opportunity to see the way that my brain is wired to understand things like, you know, in, in what I like to call in three dimensions. Um, and that is a power because uh, Aspie do have powers. And once you know your powers and you start to exploit them, this is where we have all the benefits of being with an Aspie because it's not all challenging. There's so, so much to learn when you know exactly what it is that you can emphasize and, and, and make progress in a positive mm -hmm. way. Yes, there is some challenge to be able to take into consideration. It's not going to be easy. And if you succeed, you're going to strengthen your relationship, that's for certain. You will learn more about you as an NT as well as a, mm -hmm. a, a, a an SP. But if uh, and but there's also a lot of benefits to be with an SP. It, definitely, I mean that's one thing that I noticed. I've learned a lot about myself, and I have to be honest. What what is reflected back to me is not always what I want to see. 
So it's getting over that and recognizing, okay, you know, this is one of my life challenges that I need to resolve um, if I want to evolve and, and grow. And, and that sometimes is difficult in itself. And that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, that's right. It's not always okay. what you want to see, what you need to see. There's right. two different things. And right. this is when an SP can help you to be able to realize is what you need to, to see. Highlight to highlight those right. aspects of ourselves. And it's, it's no other way. So, yeah, I think the, the next one is going to be quite interesting those who are interested, but uh, for mm -hmm. you to decide. Okay, so then um, if, they, if those listening are have ideas or topics that they think could be interesting for another podcast, maybe they're not interested in this at all, I guess we will uh, find out. Exactly. Okay. So uh, don't forget to leave your comments, and uh, we're more happy to uh, just help you out. And, and I think it's a beautiful community that uh, uh, you, uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, you have all created into this. Oh. I think the support is tremendous. Awesome. Um, not that I have read anything. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I'm just third uh, hands uh, um, to, um, exchange because I just love to be able to kind of take some kind of sentences and, think, and throw it at me and say, so what do you think of that? So I tend to have a lot of, uh, of to say because I'm under understanding of sure. like, you know, the situation, but uh, yeah. let's see where it's all going to bring us. Yeah. Okay, super. Thanks. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.